Hi, Aiden. Congratulations on the win. Uh, South Africa's batting has been doing really well in the last few matches while batting first. So, as a team, do you plan to put your chasing power into test, uh, especially after the Netherlands game? Uh, do you think that as a team you need to uh, play uh, chase more totals before the knockouts to uh, test your team and get used to that? Um, I suppose we're just approaching each game and seeing what's probably best to do on the day, but. Um, obviously, the, the history of the last, I don't know how many games it is now, we've batted first quite a bit, so um, I think it's quite easy to get that mantra of they are best, a bat first team, but um, we, we're a team that is happy to chase. Obviously, now we haven't done it in a while, so um, to do it successfully um, in the ideal world will be great, and you can get those reference points again and, and, and get those habits going, but... Um, yeah, whether or not we're going to just decide to chase because we haven't chased in a while, I'm not too sure. We'll, we'll have to see. Uh, Aiden, a, a year or two ago, maybe a bit more, you were sort of known as, as a guy that, that, that uh, make pretty 30s. Um, but now you, you tend to sort of at least go past 50 and, and you've also scored a few hundreds this year. I was just, just wondering if that was something that you sort of focused on and, and how, did you, how do you manage now to turn those good starts into big scores or bigger scores? Yeah, I don't think you always get it right, but I think in 50 over cricket there obviously is a lot more time than what I initially maybe thought. Um, you get the feel of the wicket and you maybe decide to pull the trigger slightly earlier and then you get out and you, you sit for 20 overs on the side and, and watch the other guys smack it and it, it eats away at you. So I think you, oh, I had to certainly go through those learnings to, to help it or help me realise that um, there's sort, sort of gears that you do go through in 50 over cricket and um, you can't just gear straight up and then stay in that gear. You might have to gear down a few times. So had to experience that firsthand to be able to sort of learn about it, but um, yeah, still trying to figure it out now, to be honest. Aidan, a, a feature of the last few games has been the runs scored in the last 10 overs. Um, just kind of following on from what you said, could you maybe talk about like the batting blueprint and how you set yourselves up so that you can score, you know, 140, 130, whatever it is in the last 10? Yeah, I think it goes without saying that you obviously do need wickets in hand, but we, we haven't spoken about a, a blueprint as a unit. It's been actually quite a, a strange build-up the, the last two months, um, or maybe slightly longer now. Um, no definitive necessi like roles given, but everyone kind of knows now what they need to do to, to help this batting unit sort of peak at their best. So there isn't necessarily a blueprint, um, but guys understand how to approach it. Um, a big focus on playing conditions and, and not necessarily situations too much. But obviously there'll be times where you play the situation. But yeah, that's pretty much where it's at as a unit and, and we, we keep sort of we keep saying to, to look down at the at the surface and, and not up at the scoreboard and play exactly what's in, in front of us on, on the pitch. Aidan, just to take you back to your decision at the toss. Um do you put any thinking into if we keep them out there for 50 overs and we bat properly and make a big score. By the time they get out there to bat, they're going to be physically and mentally shot. Is that in, does that come into your decision making? Maybe not before the game, but certainly while you're out there, I think you. Today, it wasn't as hot to be honest as it was the, for the England game, but um, it was still hot. And 50 overs is a long time to be in the field, whether it's hot or not. To be honest, it mentally it takes quite a bit out of you. So. Um, there is that advantage, I would say, um, especially when conditions are on, on the hot side. So it's not a, a, a reason why we end up batting first. It's not the sole reason, but I suppose it is a, a slight benefit or can potentially be a slight benefit if you do bat well first. Uh, Aidan, we are at the halfway mark, uh, so to say, of the group stage. Uh, coming into the World Cup, what is it that you guys were looking forward to achieve with, and going into these these few games? And with the wins now, do you think that these have been like proper statement performances and, and other teams will sit up and take notice of the team? Yeah, I'm not too sure if it's if it's putting statements out there. Um, we, we're trying to sort of crack on with, with what we, we're trying to do and achieve as a team and 
as every other team is, I'm sure they, they had to get into that knockout stage and, and get to that final and then play a good game of cricket in the final as well. So that's pretty much where our focus is at. Um, not trying to blow up the, the occasion. Obviously, you respect the fact that you are at a World Cup for sure and you appreciate that a lot. But ultimately, when you cross the rope, it is, it is just a game of cricket and, and I think that keeps us nice and calm as well. And um, hopefully we can sort of continue that uh, that approach going forward. Aiden, I don't mean to take anything away from the rest of you guys, but um, Quinny's now reached 400 runs. Um, has he sort of like started reaching dream territory now in terms of his output in this tournament? And also just on that, do you actually think the fact now that you mentioned, you know, there's not particularly a blueprint or anything, you know, it actually helps him? Could well be, yes. Um, we all know Kuni to, to be the free-spirited guy that he is, but he actually has a fantastic cricket brain on him. So he assesses conditions really well and and communicates that to us off the field even before we've walked out to bat. So adds a lot of value in, 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 in that regard. And then sort of just you never want to clip his wings really. Eh? You just want to let him fly. So um, he he structures it the exact way he feels, feels need and and we back that completely as a unit. So, yeah, that's where we're at. I think, we, like I mentioned, we focus on conditions. We focus on tr really trying to take good options. And um, wherever that leaves us at the end of it, if, if that thinking was, was nice and solid, then we can sleep pretty well at night. Uh, Aidan, is it tempting to look at the leaderboard and think what you have to do? I mean, it's, um, I'm sure you'll take it game by game, but will you, do you just leave that to us? I mean, you're in second place now. Um, do you sort of... Is it tempting to look at the leaderboard because it looks quite nice and think, well, plan ahead and we need two out of four to make sure of the semis, that kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, I think that's a pretty dangerous place to be, to be honest. Um, I don't think you want to start trying to do maths this far out. Um, you've still got four games of cricket and that's potentially eight points up for grabs and that's what we're going to try to push for. I think if you start sitting and, and hoping for a result from this team and trying to work out we maybe only need two wins left or, or whatever it is I don't think that's a great place to be as a unit so I'm sure we'll stay far away from that and focus on the very next game and, and try back up performances that we've put in so far um, I know it was sort of inconsequential given the outcome but you know staying out there for as long as you did in the field is that you know frustrating and, and if so what are the things that the guys take away from that that they try and apply the next time they go on the field? Yeah, it, naturally it's frustrating, I suppose, when you, when you want to try um bowl a team out as quick as you can. But we had pretty good plans in place, I felt, and went past the bat quite a bit in the back end of the innings. And the odd ball falling in, a, in no man's land didn't, didn't help much. But I think it was good for us to be able to tap into death plans to a batter that was in and putting us under, under a bit of pressure. So... I think there was a lot of value in that for us and then um, naturally to keep taking wickets from the other end is, is also good for, for the bowling unit. So sometimes it, you can get a bit frustrated on the field but I think you, you, the, the game comes to an end and you sit back and you realise the, the good value that was out there in, in what, what happened for us. Aiden, uh, peaking at the right time is kind of a tricky factor when it comes to long tournaments. But given how South Africa have fared so far, two excellent games at the start now, looking back at the last two games, one sided contest, how does it uh, place you in terms of the contests that are ahead against New Zealand, India, which are very two strong teams as well? And what is the take on peaking at the right time? I mean, if you have at all achieved it, if you think. Yeah, I'm not too sure, to be honest. Um, peaking is suppose the result of playing good cricket and if we're going into each game trying to play good cricket then um, we can we can see where it gets us but the things that we've been doing well we've put a lot of emphasis on those things and, and those sort of processes for lack of a better word I know that word is thrown around quite a bit but that's that really is what it is and um, like I've mentioned for us as a batting unit even as a bowling unit we try to take really good options out there and make good decisions and um, if those options speak to the conditions, we, we feel like we'll be in the game. So if we can do that for long periods of time and, and moving forward each game, then we, we hope it puts us in a good position.